Hey everyone, in this AP Chem series video, I'll explain how to interpret a photoelectron spectrum. First, remember from the last video that in photoelectron spectroscopy, we use x-rays to remove multiple electrons from many different atoms in a sample so that the different ionization energies of those electrons in different orbitals can be measured. Like in the model shown where we use x-rays with 143,000 kilojoules per mole to kick off this outermost electron. Afterwards, that electron leaves with only 132,000 kilojoules per mole, which means that 11,000 kilojoules of the original 143,000 must have been used to remove that electron and break its attraction to the nucleus. In other words, the ionization energy of that electron must be 11,000 kilojoules. And if those same x-rays were used to remove this inner electron, it might only have 125,000 kilojoules after it's been removed because it took 18,000 kilojoules of energy to remove that one. In this video, we'll take a look at how a photoelectron spectrometer reports these ionization energy values. So a photoelectron spectrometer produces a graph from those ionization energy data that it gathers. And this graph has a name, it's called the photoelectron spectrum. That spectrum looks something like this. You'll notice a vertical and horizontal axis with some peaks listed out along the way, those peaks representing the various electrons that have been removed from the atom. On the horizontal axis is where you'll find the different ionization energies of the removed electrons, here plotted in kilojoules per mole. Sometimes you'll also see this labeled as binding energy, but it means essentially the same thing. It might also have units listed in volts or electron volts. One thing that's strange about a photoelectron spectrum is that you'll see the higher ionization energies listed here on the left and they actually get smaller and smaller and smaller as you move out. So you can expect to see the high ionization energy electrons plotted closer to where the two axes meet. These are the electrons that are harder to remove and closer to the nucleus. And of course, as you move to the right, you'll run into the lower ionization energy electrons that are easier to remove and therefore farther from the nucleus. This setup makes up some of the key ideas for the video. Make sure you pause and take a minute to write it down. Now let's talk about the vertical axis labeled here as photoelectron intensity. Sometimes you'll also see this labeled as relative number of electrons, which is actually a better description of what it's telling you. Here we can see a very tall peak. The taller the peak equals more electrons or the shorter the peak equals less electrons. This makes up some more key ideas. Again, make sure you take some time to pause and write them down. So let's finish interpreting this particular photoelectron spectrum by labeling each peak with the corresponding orbitals and determining what element was analyzed to produce it. When doing this, I always like to start with the peaks on the left hand side because I always know that those are the ones with the highest ionization energies or the ones that were hardest to remove. In other words, those are the ones that are closest to the nucleus. That means if you just take a second and think about which orbitals are going to be found closest to the nucleus, you're pretty safe to label this leftmost peak as the 1s orbital, which can hold two electrons. As we move to the right from there, we'll get to this next peak. Notice first that this second peak has the same height as the first one. When two peaks have the same height, it means that they are representing orbitals that contain the same amount of electrons. That means this is going to be the 2s orbital, also containing two electrons. Additionally, this makes sense because after the 1s orbital with the highest ionization energies, you would expect the 2s orbital to have the next highest ionization energies. And for our final peak, you might notice that it's much taller. In fact, it's exactly three times as tall. Three times as tall means three times as many electrons as these first two peaks. And since they contained two electrons, this one is representing six. So you might expect that this peak represents the two p orbitals containing six total electrons. Since this is 10 electrons total, we can also say that this is the photo electron spectrum for neon. So let's close the video with one additional example. Here's a new photoelectron spectrum so we can try to identify the element and label each peak with the electrons to which they correspond. You can also pause the video and try this yourself before you watch me go over the answers. So to start, just like in the last example, the peak that's furthest to the left is whichever orbital has the highest ionization energy, in this case the 1s, which can contain two electrons total. 
Since the second peak that I see has an equal height to the first one, I know that it must also contain two electrons, and therefore is the 2s orbital with two electrons. The third peak is three times as high as the first two, so contains three times as many electrons, or six. That means this peak corresponds to the 2p orbitals containing six electrons. The fourth peak is equal in height to the first two, meaning it also contains two electrons like they did, so this one is probably the 3s orbital also containing two electrons. This means that my final peak must correspond with some additional electrons in the 3p orbitals since it's only half the height of the other peaks that contain two electrons, that means my 3p orbitals for this element must only contain one single electron. If you count these up, it suggests that with 13 total electrons, we're looking at the photoelectron spectrum for aluminum. And that wraps it up for this video on interpreting a photoelectron spectrum. Thanks for watching, and here's a brief summary.